in today's video this is a very very exciting one by the way we're gonna be taking a look at the fall of 2024 all of our analogs that i've put together for this upcoming fall time we're gonna be breaking down every single one on one single map we're actually gonna start with that believe it or not and then we're gonna break down the month by month and then we're gonna break down every single one of these years so we're gonna take a look at the entirety of 1964 fall time 1970, 1974, 1983, 1995, 2000, and 2010, which are my analog years for this current uh, couple of seasons here ahead. So let's just dive into things. Here's the map for the entirety here of the fall time on all of these analogs, and it looks very messy. This is why we're starting out with this, because this isn't a very realistic look. Uh, I've always talked about it, but you don't expect to see cold or warmth from coast to coast like this, uh, yet this map is calling for it. And you'll see when we break the ears down, but the reason for this is because some of them are warm, some of them are cold, some of them are cold in the west, some of them are cold in the east, uh, but the problem here is that they're all mixing together just wrong. So we're going to take a look at all the years individually in just a moment. Let's first off take a look at all of them put together for September. And when we look at this, we see a lot of cold near the Canadian border here compared to typical. So a lot of people would see this and be like, well, of course it's colder near Canada. But uh, the problem here is that um, this is compared to what's normal. So it is colder than what's normal for Montana in Montana. Uh, so therefore this, you know, it could be colder than what's, what's normal in Texas and warmer in Montana, um, you know, compared to their climate norm. Uh, we can see that Really, it's cold everywhere, but the closest to being above normal is going to be this kind of deeper south central states and southeastern states here, from what we can see, uh, for September. And again, se September is almost a summer month still for a lot of folks. You got to remember, uh, a lot of times we can still see heat waves during September. And if it's a little bit warmer than normal, you might not even see much of a difference between July and August and September. Uh, so it's not too far off. So keep that in mind. Um, that, you know, you kind of need some below normal temperatures to really make September feel like a fall month. Uh, not, not necessarily the same here in October. It can be warmer in October, but, um, definitely you've seen a good 10 degree drop off at least, um, from, from September to October, I would say August to October, especially. But when we look at the analogs, it's interesting to see an actual strong contrast here with this many years put together for the October analogs it looks like many of these featured warmth in the north central states during october and many of them featured a lot of cold along the eastern seaboard and the gulf coast this could be due to some hurricanes moving on shore which can cool things down substantially if you live in these states you know that but when a when a hurricane or tropical system moves overhead it usually feels like 60s you know it gets very cool after a hurricane uh, even in the summer months it can bring very abnormal cold temperatures with it uh, so that could be something to do with this but these analogs are a little too strong to just be related to that so it could play a role but this also would likely mean some pretty substantial sustained cold also took place during these years along these coastlines uh, with the west being a little bit closer to normal i would say not too strong in either direction but a little cold, colder than what's typical and then for november we kind of get back to what the the overall fall looked like where it's just kind of messy you can't really make out much of this we do see some overall very cold temperatures along some of the rockies northern plains and then southern rockies into the four corner states and then same story here for the southeast especially over florida georgia south carolina uh, but overall i mean find where the warmth is really in this and you know as we look at these years we're going to find that none of them look like this uh and this is just a messy mix the only one of these that looked really realistic was october uh but september and november looked like a mess let's just break down every single year individually uh, so this is September to November, your climatological fall time of 1964, which is our oldest analog that we're going to be using. Um, and we are using the averages from 1999, 1991 to 2020. So this does account for any warming that has happened over this period. So uh, this is compared to our current averages, um, if you will. Now we do see that there is some cooler temperatures along the west, which we would typically call negative PNA. But what's interesting is you really get a lot of cooler air along the east as well. So this is just a really rare look when you see cold on coast to coast like this, like they had in 1964. And this is some pretty strong cold as well for some areas. 
The only spots that really look any any bit warm would be Missouri, Illinois, Iowa, Kansas a little bit, Oklahoma, Arkansas, but that's about it. Let's just go ahead and take a look at 1970, and this one looks a little bit more realistic. We see that it was colder in the West overall, negative PNA, forced warmer air into the eastern states here, and that's why we saw a warmer east in this fall time. So a lot more realistic here from 1970. But as we move towards our 1974 analog, you can see it's almost the opposite. Very cold here in the east, uh, and then a little bit of warmth here in the northwest, which typically encourages this cold in the east. So pretty realistic here. Uh, so, so far, we saw the 1964 one, which we're just going to disregard a little bit. Um, the 1971... We saw cold in the west, warm in the east, and then this one we're seeing warm in the west, cold in the east. So you're kind of one in one as far as if the cold's going to be in the east or the west. Uh, also, I should have mentioned this in the beginning of the video, but I feel like I should mention it now since I didn't. Uh, what we used basically to find these is two things. So one of them would be a weaker La Nina, which is what I expect for the fall and winter months. So looking at about uh, under a degree uh, above average in your ENSO region, if, for those of you that know what that is and uh, kind of how to break it down. So a weaker La Nina is exactly what I expect. Once you get into the stronger La Nina territory, it acts a lot different than the weaker ones. So I felt it was very important to go with just the weak La Ninas. And then also any La Ninas that we were kind of descending from an El Nino down into La Nina status over kind of the summer months, I also threw in here as well. And I actually had a little bit more leniency for a stronger La Nina if that was the case, just so that we get a little bit of a balance uh, in some of the characteristics that we have this year. That is how I found these analogs, um, and I, I think that's the best way to go currently. Obviously, we might develop some stuff later on in the summer and then in the fall that we can kind of filter these out a little bit uh, further, but for now, this is all we have to go with, basically. So again, one and one. Here's 1983, a little bit of a messy year again. Uh, we kind of had colder in the west, colder in the southeast, but look at this, warmer across the central states. So you got kind of cold on both sides, uh, but not for the central states. Very interesting. Again, this is one that's kind of odd. I doubt we'll see a fall that looks like this or like uh, this, to be honest. So these two, the 1964 and 1983, are uh, very non-typical, and it's probably impossible to find another analog that looks exactly like this for the fall time. So again, a very out there analog. Here's another realistic looking one, 1995, warm along the west, very clean look, positive PNA, which stands for Pacific North American Oscillation, by the way. All that means is warmth along the west. This encourages the cold to move around this area and down into the eastern half of the nation. So something like this was likely the pattern during this fall of 1995. So this is, now we're two in one, two for cold in the east, uh, one for warm in the east. Again, the opposite is true in the west for both of those years. Uh, here we go. Uh, looking at 2000. Another kind of messy one. Not going to lie. For September to November. Uh, looking colder across the west overall, but a little bit cooler along the east with some warmer temps along this kind of upper Midwest Great Lakes region down through some of the lower Midwest and Ohio Valley. Uh, very interesting look here once again. And then finally, here is the fall of 2010, which is a nor another warm kind of in the east and central states here uh, with a little bit cooler along the west. And I mean, if we were to really, really break all of these down and we'll, we'll glance at them once more, but I would say um, colder in the east seems like a uh, a likelihood here from, from looking at these. We do have two that are showing warmth in the east here, uh, specifically the 1970 and then the 2010 one. Uh, however, we see that 1964, 1974, 1983, 1995, and 2000 all featured cold in the east here. So out of these analogs, I'd say about 7 out of 10. I don't even know if we have 10 total here, but about 7 out of 10 of these show cold in the east, and then the other 3 show warm in the east. And if we were to look at the west, I mean, let's see. We get overall 1 showing cold, one, 2 showing cold, 1 showing warmth. Another showing cold, another showing warmth, another showing cold, another showing cold. Uh, so really the central states is where the the, the more likely to, to be warm would be based on this. I mean, one, this is hardly warm in the central states, but it is it is warm nevertheless. Uh, as we before, there's two, and then kind of like three and four. So uh, 
what's really interesting is uh, from these analogs, you get kind of a colder west, warmer central states, and then a colder east again on a lot of these. So I'll be curious to see if this does end up happening. Uh, but again, the likelihood here from what I'm seeing on these analogs, at least so what history tells us is cold in the east. Also some strong signals that's some cold along the immediate west with the central states being a lot more up in the air and maybe even leaning towards warmer. Uh, I would say is the most likely according to these historical analogs as of now. But again, we are in June and as we move towards August, right before the fall time, I'll be talking a lot more about the fall during that month. And again, likely we will filter these down a little bit more. And maybe uh, we'll, we'll lean more in another direction. But for now, this is the best that history has to tell us. Um, and it does agree with some model guidance that I've seen out there for the upcoming fall. So definitely, definitely something interesting, something to track. I'm looking forward to talking more about the upcoming fall and winter. So be sure to subscribe. We do upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload. So you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll be seeing you guys in the next video.